Last ministry. I am Bernie for Sigourney. Hello. To a jungle bird. Pretty good. Yeah. Don't ask me the ingredients because I don't remember. <laughs> it was really good. Oh, wait, sorry. Uh, I need my mic. Oh. Oh. Um. Oh. That's strange. There's a note. It's highly irregular. It is high time I mention the surprisingly versatile, versatile, versatile um, of cycling method of Sutash. I know what you're thinking. Sutash. That old chestnut? <laughs> Finally, she's addressing the household thing we all know about. Uh, in case you don't, <laughs> Sutash is a blend of embroidery and applique and will make vastly more sense after we look at the ingredients. I agree. Let's do that. Spaghetti strap, store bought or handmade. A cutting tool. A garment of your choice. Taylor's chalk? Possibly. Pens? Definitely. A needle and thread? Maybe. In a nutshell, Sutash is getting a spaghetti strap and arranging it on a garment and stitching it down. And it's almost like embroidery in that, like, whereas embroidery is with, you know, you got maybe a design with thread. And then applique, I think of it as more of like an object, you know, a flower or something, and it's sewn onto a garment. So this kind of blends both of those. And I say spaghetti strap, I'm sure that could be any kind of cording. Um, or the rope belt. See our rope belt video or puff belt video <laughs> um, if you want to really go wild with it. But today I'm going to show you how to make the spaghetti strap. You can also store, store by it, the normal way of saying buy something. <laughs> store by it um but i'm gonna show you how to make spaghetti strap really quick and then we're going to arrange it on this garment so you could do a sort of wavy arrangement you could spell a word you could go nuts with it but today we're going to do a spiral so in the end it'll look something like this and this can be sewn by machine or by hand i'm going to probably sew it by machine just for you know so we're not here for an hour as I'm doing this. And we will begin by making the strap. Even if you're like, Sutash isn't for me. Well, at least you'll learn how to make a spaghetti strap. So there's there's always something. Okay. Um, this is a scrap from a vintage dress. Um, let's see. So I'm just going to use this because that's another great thing about... Okay, I'm going to say Sutash a lot. And it sounds like... Doesn't it sound like a French dessert or something? Or like a flourish? Or like it's like burnt sugar something i don't know like souffle or yeah souffle yeah. or like i mean i also think of succotash which is like some sort of savory dish that i'm not sure uh anything about it has something to do with like hominy or corn or something right. anyway that doesn't sound sexy but <laughs> so let's just go with french dessert instead of my um hillbilly and i can say that because i'm from arkansas uh hillbilly uh corn <laughs> dish <laughs> Oh, wow. Okay. Now, how thick to make this? A lot of store-bought strap will have sort of like a cord in it, so it has a little more like body to it. So this one won't. So I want to make sure it's not so wide or big that it's like it's flopping <laughs> a lot. I'm just going to sort of, well, I could do this. I could kind of eyeball it. All right. Uh, let's see. Maybe about here. I'm nothing if not mathematically accurate and exact. Um, I'm like, here-ish. So that looks like it's roughly in, I, I think I remember for some reason, seven eighths of an inch is is running through my head right now. So it's it's about an inch or seven eighths. I love when I really get into the, like seven eighths. It's just like uh, 33 sixteenths of a, oh my God. I'll do that sometimes. I'm like, what's well, not really a, a fourth of an inch. 
I'm really eyeballing this one here. And of course, this skirt has a lot of seams, so I'll have to, I'll be like reinforcing these weird <laughs> random seams and trimming away. Obviously, you can use normal fabric that you just have lying around. Um, and with this one, I'm trying to think, I would probably cut it on the bias. Um, that's going to make it just sort of do better. I don't know. It's going to make it like have that little bit of, of give to it. This is knit, so I'm just cutting right into it. I'd say usually if it's like woven, especially you're going to be cutting on the bias, which is the 45, 45 degree angle. Um, and I know that can waste a lot of fabric, but I don't know. But yeah, this is a good way to use scrap fabric um, because this is going to end up being so slight that even if it has a pattern to it, that could be kind of interesting. I don't know. Oh, and as far as how much you'll need, obviously it'll depend on how big the spiral is or if you do some other design. Um, so <laughs> this is probably about right. Let's see. Um, just over a yard, maybe a yard and a few inches, give or take. So, oh, this is quite long. And of course, I'm afraid if I trim it, then I'll need I'll need like three more inches at the end, and I'll I'll regret everything. So I'll just sew the whole thing, and we'll see what happens in the moment. A little trick for sewing uh, cording and being able to flip it out inside out easily. There are these things called loop turners, but they're only so long, and so if you're doing a longer piece of cord. It could, you know, be tricky. And then there's an old friend, the bodkin, that can help us. But another little trick is to get some sort of, um, I guess, cord. I'm trying to think of any other thing, like ribbon or whatever would work. But let's just say some sort of cording. And you're going to first stitch this in place. Stitch it real good. And then we're going to, you know, stitch the entire cord all the way along. Uh, the edge lengthwise. And so that way when we're done, we'll be able to pull the cord inside out. So that is what I will be doing it next. First, I'm going to stitch up those little seams. So I put a pin there because as I cut this from a garment, it has the little seam that I just reinforced. And I just want to make sure I don't um, do the very thing I was talking about, which is sew it the wrong way. So now the wrong side is on the outside. So I'm putting a pin there just to kind of remind myself. But before I start sewing it down lengthwise, I'm going to put the cording in. So actually, yeah, I'll go ahead and do that. And we'll just be stitching or kind of almost tacking across the top just to make sure that stays in place because it can be kind of slippery. And so to make sure it stays in place so when I flip it. And I'm going to go ahead and just keep it attached to the spool because there's no reason to cut a length of it if I'm in the end just really only going to need about half an inch of it. So low waist, baby. And once we flip it inside out, I was talking about how like some store-bought cords have or some store bought straps have cord inside as to kind of give them body. And so you'll notice when I flip it inside out, this seam allowance we're making will end up being the body of the cord. So it'll have a little bit of structure to it. All right. One take Charlie over here. <laughs> Now I'm going to flip it inside out. Well, I have to make sort of a, um, a turtleneck. I will not address <laughs> any other, meaning lube, turtleneck. Oh, Jesus. If you get it wet, it God, will. God, it will. Fly better? <laughs> so, yeah, I don't know. Yeah. Sorry. <laughs> so okay, make sure and keep every single second of me struggling. <laughs> and <laughs> everyone needs to see this. <laughs> Oh, 
Sorry, I am lost in the weeds here. You're fine. <laughs> <laughs> Kids like playing cat's cradle over here by myself. <laughs> it's hard also because it's it's not like a a big juicy strap. Sorry, God. I'm sorry, I made such a big deal about not cutting not cutting the cord, and so now if I do, <laughs> I'll be sued for malpractice. Okay, I'm very gingerly. It helps if you kind of scrunch it up, um, like pull the cord, scrunch it up, and then just kind of work with it. And like, again, like mine's, it's hard because you kind of, it's nice for it to be stretchy because it's easy in, another, in one way, but another way, like, I don't want those seams to pop. Okay. I'm going to try. <laughs> this seems like an old grandma trick, you know, like I'm doing something I'm like, oh, get a little water in my fingers so I can read the paper or whatever. I don't know. <laughs> like, I know, like. Or those, sorry, I was also thinking, what are those little, like, rubber thimble thingies yeah, yeah. for, like, to... Like, literally, like, yeah, yeah, page turn. Page turn, yeah. I don't know what they're technically called. It's so different when you're doing this alone versus um, on camera, because I'm, like, I'm really scrutinizing, like, don't, don't listen. Because essentially what you're doing is, are you... Oh scrunching it up and then holding the cord yeah i'm sort of like holding the cord pulling with my fingernails I, but i want everyone to know that this is actually easy i'm just um it's hard to do it on camera <laughs> yeah it's kind of hard to describe because it is this like the sensory like i can feel that if i pull too hard this the stitch will snap so i can't do what i would normally do is just go you know like that um but i'm like no i gotta i gotta inch it down which is easier to do with woven it's yeah it's easier to pull it and then or if it were like this knit is it's not i know there, there's like the word stable it's unstable it's unhinged it's deranged it's like it's not well okay i really just want to go whoosh. all right we're getting finally to the end and bleh, there we go all right i'm just gonna snip off this end and look at that we barely used any of the cording and it's still wrapped up and i'm sure this is far too long but we will figure out the length we need and so with these ends it's gonna be kind of tricky i will probably use like a thread snipper or, or a pen even just to kind of poke them inside and just to sort of get a clean finish it is so this is getting into the minutia but anyway this kind of deal that i'm doing a horrible job at but yeah just to kind of get the ends inside this is comically long uh so i'll have to trim it down i went ahead and tried it on and put pins to kind of know the um Parameter. I always get perimeter and parameter mixed up. So this is every, every episode. I'm like, what is this word I'm thinking of? <laughs> parameter. Yeah. The perimeter is like, I, I survey the perimeter. Is the area. The parameters. It's are still, like they're the, kind of the same. Parameters are like the. <laughs> they're both very similar. Uh, <laughs> I went to fashion school. <laughs> and we were talking about parameters and parameters for a full semester. Um, <laughs> I skipped that uh, year. Okay. Got <laughs> so, so we know the boundaries. Uh, <laughs> um, so that way I don't like, you know, just make it wildly too low or high or whatever, or too big. So at this point I could get Taylor's chalk or, or some, uh, some utensil and make the spiral that, so I can just sort of follow along and almost trace over it. But I'm like, well, what if I make it? And then I immediately I'm like, no, I want it to be different. <laughs> so I'm just going to improv this as best I can. And it's one of those things. I always have the idea that you can like, oh, just just pin it wherever, like have it start wherever. And sometimes it's like having it rotate by 90 degrees totally changes the vibe of it. So now I'm trying to like, I'm like, okay, wait in the moment, figure out. And sometimes I feel like it's easier to start from the outside in, sometimes inside out. So. And then this one has this seam and it's like, is that going to bug me? Should I just use this uh, center section 
even though I, I talked about the seams <laughs> for 10 minutes about, you know, okay. And then if I cut it, I'm going to regret it. <laughs> this, that's all this channel is, is just me talking about like, am I going to regret this for the rest of my life? <laughs> Um, I think it'll end up being kind of small. So maybe, okay, I'm just gonna do it. Oh my God, I've just, I spent two hours flipping this thing inside out. Okay, well, here's the deal. If it's bad, I'll just use the store-bought strap. So it's fine. I've got an escape hatch. This looks like nothing now and it's gonna be gorgeous. It's gonna blow your mind when I'm done. That's like so much of like sewing or upcycling or anything. It's like, I'm like, oh my God, this looks like absolutely nothing. It's like flops and slops. And then I truly just like iron it. I'm like, oh my God, it's couture. <laughs> I'm a genius. Um, I, I think I will maybe need a little bit more than the middle section. Yeah, it's gonna be a lot of this. It's gonna be a lot of scooching. Mm -mm. And sometimes if you make it like too tight, like too many spiral, too many, sort of like, you know, like they're too close together, too many turns, <laughs> then it kind of loses, you almost need a little more negative space just to kind of make it pop. And obviously it depends. Okay. I think at a certain point I will have to just cut it because I, I need to be able to fly free and really get into this. All right. Give or take. And I'll, I'll, I'll maybe add a little buffer. Okay, just do it. Okay. And I'm going to do the same thing I did a minute ago <laughs> and redo. I'm going to turn these ends inward and then pin them in place where they lay. And then I'm going to pin this whole thing in place as best I can. It will look a little puckery and crazy, but I'll just be careful as I sew. You can sew this down by hand. I don't know if getting like a big embroidery loop, <laughs> I've never worked with those. I don't know if that would be helpful to keep everything taut or, or what works best for you, but you can pin it all the way around and then hand sew it. I guess I'm trying to think if it would be from the bottom would be easier or just going over the top with sort of a pick stitch. I don't know if you know about hand sewing, <laughs> go wild and explore that. I'm going to sew it down. It will sort of like mash it and you will see the stitch. So if that is unattractive to you, then maybe consider hand sewing. Um, but you got the two options and then you might want to make sure the seam is like downward, downward facing. <laughs> um, so that way it just looks a little cleaner. So it looks like slop now. We'll pin it in place, sew it down. It'll be gorgeous. I pinned it in place. I used a piece of cardstock in between the layers of the shirt that would help me pin so I wasn't like catching the other side of the shirt but it looks a lot better than it did a minute ago <laughs> and I'm trying to decide if I should start from the out I think it might be easier to start from the outside in so there's not quite as many pins either way there's gonna be a lot of pins in my way <laughs> Here is the final look, tucked into my trousers very smartly. Um, I love how this turned out. There's a little section here. I might pop a few stitches and sort of like round it out a little bit, but otherwise, perfect. Oh, stop you. oh. Because the flight. Flight's on. yeah, it is. It's getting, and it's it's getting darker. It's pretty gloomy outside. Yeah. Oh, um, this was in the light box. Okay. Oh, it's from past Lars after she had that jungle bird, I guess. Soutache is an intriguing, inexpensive way to use scraps to totally transform a garment. Textile art verging on sculpture. Uh, you can take it as far as you'd like. A little spiral on a top or an all-over embellishment on a coat. Well, I agree. And this is definitely one for the book. And go on, you good thing. Or you're gonna be like, hold I'm up, hold up. You okay. It doesn't make sense for you to be like. Wait a minute, I'm in, I'm in full darkness. <laughs> yeah.
this is way too long. Why didn't I do it shorter? I'm a fool. <laughs> okay. Today's all hot dogs. I don't know. I was like, it's a hot dog day. I mean. <laughs> like, I think it's better when it's on you because you're leaning close. Oh, okay, okay. But as far as talking. Oh, yeah. As far as, as far as talking, shut, shut up. <laughs> I'm just gonna She's single white femaling herself. 